Markus Richter. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. My name is Markus Richter. I speak in the microphone. Some of the people know my voice already. I moderate the case radio every now and then, every month. Uh, the monthly uh, broadcast of Chaos Computer Club. It's uh, approximately two hours long. We have two to four hackers as a guest, and they say this is just too short. We need more time. This just doesn't work. The log. Log logical consequence, we are trying 30 people in one hour, and uh, please be welcome. 13 people. Why do we do this? Jugendhakt is a project that was uh, initiated with the Open Edge Foundation Germany to uh, allow teenagers to give uh, an access to hackathons. Uh, this is something uh, that comes every year in the southwest and north and center in Berlin. The, Ost, the east one was in, the north one was in Hamburg and in Berlin there was already in regional events 15, 20 people in Berlin and what happens there is in principle um, it's just a normal hackathon. There is a motto, people come together, they should do something, they learn something. Sometimes they have an idea that they want to imp implement and uh, the highlight of, uh, of this year was the, the event in Berlin where, for the first time, even more uh, people were, in, uh, as, in this, as in this room, uh, it was the broadcast of uh, the end presentation. Uh, there was really a lot of people in the audience. Uh, today we want to show you, to introduce you to the people, uh, the young people, the teenagers. How do, you, how do you say really, young hackers, youth hackers? It's going to be today like uh, a very quick uh, presentation and discussion. If you are interested in, uh, in, in one particular project, you can do it on the website of jugendact.de. And tomorrow in the Sender Centrum uh, um, at noon, uh, 12.30, there is a real presentation. Together we have three big themes, Refugees Welcome, Society and Surveillance. And in each of these topics, a few young hackers uh, are invited, and they're going to talk about their, their projects. Um, we have 20-minute blocks. If you have questions, just ask them. Just give me a sign, uh, stand in front of a microphone. I'm going to see, I'm going to have a look who uh, wants to ask the question, and we're going to answer them. The, noon, enough introduction. Let's start with the first block. Wilfried is welcome. Noah is going to fin. And please say something in the microphone, Noah. Yeah, and this is the project Fuck Borders. Yeah, we're going to talk about this. Then we have a three people, David, Anna and Karl from the project Germany says welcome. Please speak in the microphone. Say hello. Hello. Very nice. Okay, a warm applause. Please don't spare with your applause, because it, it's just a small presentation. There is a lot of work beneath that, behind that. It's really, really nice for people to get this positive feedback and get applause. Where shall we start? Let's start with Moin Refugees, High Refugees. It's a project from Hamburg, from Jugendhack North. One question I have now. Jugendhack, Youthhack, Hacker, how do you want to be called? Everything would be fine. I would call it Hacker. But Okay, that's eine große Frage. Das müssen wir klären. Uh, we, we must clear this. Please now a big applause for a hacker. They want to be called just hacker. Thank you. Now applause for a hacker. Yeah, not not undecided. Everybody makes what they want. So Moin Refugees, what is this project? Does it have to do with trains? I was I was told it has to do with trains. Well, um, I just start. So we are doing um, Jugendhack North in Hamburg. Um, uh, 
and we are presenting now the topic refugees and uh, we combine it with the hamburger project and it's about it's about um, it's about, um the uh, an app for an iphone and it should um, make the communication between helpers and um, um, refugees and everyone and it should be make the conversation and communication between um, these two parties easier and you can sign in as a refugee or as a an helper and um, and now and now you can sign in as a refugee tell the date when you arrive and um, and then they are going they are sell, uh, saved and then they send it to the helpers so that the helpers have all the dates and this should make the conversation uh, um, conversation easier and communication is it about the first contact when they arrive at the city or forever it's about the first context, uh, first contact, um, and it's also about the people who are interested in. So um, there's a section about y news, and um, you can look in there. But it's mainly for the first contact between helpers and refugees. And there's also um, um, a conversation. <laughs> where you, can you can always donate money. money. <laughs> So how is this technically? Well, um, so it's, um, it's we're four people and we're sitting together and then we thought about, hey, how should we do this? And then we had the idea. Um, there are controls at the borders and there are and we thought about, hey, let's track these controls at the borders, at Twitter, or and a lot of left political people helped us and get their data. So there are a lot of borders got, um, uh, got destroyed by left political people. So then we uh, built map. So when we had this daughter, we built map and we based it on a street map. And then we put a heat map over it and um, with a warm body camera. And then you can take a look at where all these borders get controlled and have the exact position. So it's not about where it is safe or where it is not safe, but it shows a tendency where you might be able to cross a border. Exactly. We, we, uh, we analyze just data we get from the people who came here. There's just a difficulty, a lot of difficulties. So. Um, so we we need to check our dates, and that's very difficult. You've talked in the conjunctive. Do you, is it, are you ready with the project, or you, are you still working on it? So we are still working on this technique. Um, at the moment, we are working. Um, we are working to get as many data. Do you need as help? As many data as we need. Um, and yes, we need help. Um, there are a few ideas on GitHub how we want to do it. <laughs> and on jugendhack.de. Um, Just look at jugendhack.de slash projects. Yeah, it should be somewhere. We, we will see. We are perfect, <laughs> perfectly um, organized. And then you can take a look at the source code and, and find the contact. Um, this is auch eine der schönen Sachen. This is one of the beautiful places that about Jugendhack. It's not about making, making the perfect uh, product, but it's about the way there. And you can also um, <laughs> you can also fail at the project. This might sound stupid, but um, it's also about the um, process and how how you go about the way and that it is also um, 
important to learn that uh, some things might fail and that you can start over again. And um, now we are going to the second project, which is German yeah. says welcome. Yeah, Germany says welcome is a website for refugees um, um, at Jugendhackt West. And we started with the idea um, of how to help the refugees. And we, okay, um, we need money and now we can do it. Um, and so, so we started Germany says welcome in Berlin. And we started at the Congress in Berlin. Yeah, we thought, what is the biggest challenge with refugees coming in? With a lot of, we, we talked with a lot of refugees. The most, most of them told us they had too much information to deal with or they don't get enough information. So where to give an asylum uh, uh, application? What, what kind of data do you need to put in the form? Um, how do you deal with the public transportation? Then we had an idea to make an FAQ, frequently asked questions. And here we also have a lot of information. So the project uh, is uh, growing and sometimes it's necessary to fall on your face to, to get to do it better. So we thought of a concept not to just uh, separate in categories, but also also in uh, in levels. Uh, if a refugee arrives and wants to put a, a, an asylum, uh, a, an asylum um, application, he doesn't really need the information on how to find an apartment. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't need uh, to know how to uh, to um, give this uh, formula if he needs an apartment. So we we have, a, uh, for instance, sending the formula. Uh, the formula is pending and waiting, and third thing, um, integration in the society. So we have a Facebook as well. There is a project, Facebook, we integrated this in our app. It offers uh, uh, words that are frequently used, like if you want to ask if there is pork meat in the food, very, very easy things of the daily life. Uh, where is the next train, where is the next uh, subway? And also we have a map to show uh, the next uh, uh, foreign, foreign office, where do I find a hotspot? In the keynote, we were asked to give uh, refugees more internet access and we want to participate in this. The first question to the audience, do you have questions? Can we have some light? Mm -hmm. All right, there are no questions. Are there questions on the internet? No, there are also no questions on the internet. I have a question. I should have explained this in advance. If you have a question, please go to the microphones with the numbers. So I can um, say the number. Okay, there is a question at one number, number two. Hello. I didn't. I didn't think I could uh, just ask questions in between. What about the challenge that the, the refugees don't speak German? There is this phrase book. You called it in a, with the English word phrase book, but uh, the refugees speak very many different languages. How do you deal with this? I'm asking every one of you. In which language do you publish your solutions? In Germany, with us welcome, we use this Facebook, where we have 26 uh, languages. Our Facebook will be translated into 23 or 26 languages. It's not ours, but we use it from another... Um, Applause for the project Facebook, that we are just binding in our app. It's not our project. And the rest of the app? will be translated with the county North Rhine-Westphalia with whom we work together and they want to implement the app as well. And we also collected all the languages, German, English, Arabic. It's difficult 
There are many dialects and, and languages uh, if when refugees come to Germany. We want to offer for as many people as possible, uh, we offer to offer the translations, but we are still in the process of uh, assessing how many languages. How do you do it with more refugees? Uh, the app is right now in English because that's the most common language. Many things work about pictures so that they don't need uh, any language. Any, But we would be happy if people would consider helping us and translating in languages that we don't, uh, that we don't speak. Uh, if somebody feels interested and wants to help us, it would be really great to come to us and signal your your readiness to help. And, and what, what about fuck borders? <laughs> yeah, fuck borders is a map. Yeah. Of course, every, everything is uh, self-explaining, but uh, the instructions may be, the, the language is not the biggest problem, I think. Of course, yeah, there could be some explanation, some text uh, accompanying the map in various languages. It's a work in progress. We we didn't really consider the language problem for the fuck borders. Microphone number four. Hello. Hello. My question is: everything works with the app. How far do the refugees have handies, have mobile phones? Um, how how do you know that uh, this app is being um, is being used? How popular is it among refugees? Is there an audience um, of refugees who can use the apps? So what about uh, the information? How do the refugees get the information before they arrive at the yeah, city? Yeah, true. This is a problem. You can hack north. We had two refugees who were there and did something. We talked with them and uh, they got the information for other information. So we have the information that refugees do have mo mobile phones. Uh, our project is only for iOS. We're trying to port it on, on Android to reach as many people as possible. But it's, uh, it's an issue. This is, this is the next step. But apart from this, there is the possibility to register more people so you can share a mobile phone. As soon as the app is in the App Store, right now we're still testing it, but as soon as the app is in the App Store, we're going to try to reach as many people as possible. So, uh, so that the refugees know that there is the app and that they can use it. With fact borders, uh, I think it's more complicated because the information needs to arrive as the refugees before they even arrive here. It needs to be there The earlier. mobile solution itself is used on on E-flat, it's a JavaScript-based solution for OpenStreetMap. And as far as I know, it's portable on, on various uh, operating systems. And of, co of course, there is going to be a website. There is going to be a web solution. So we have a, a large possibility of, implementi of implementations. <laughs> we need to finish with the questions for this uh, section because we only have 20 minutes. We develop at the moment only for Android and for web browsers, so we can reach many people. But our projects are quite similar. Uh, maybe we could just work together and do make an iOS version together. And maybe... To the first question, we have something like a survey. 80% of the refugees who come here have a mobile phone, smartphone. So to, to make sure that the app reaches uh, uh, the, the, the target, then we've been thinking about many things, but we, we are... We are um, the, the app is going to be distributed on refugees who, who put uh, application. When refugees set an application, they are being given the app. 
from the authorities. So have, we have reached the first, uh, the end of the first section of refugees welcome. Uh, many thanks to the project Fuck Borders. Germany says welcome and moin the refugees. Please leave the table and we are going to the next section, which is society. Everything on the stage is very short, very compact. If you want to talk to the people, they are still here. There is a youth hacked, youth hacked assembly next to the center centrum on the first floor. And you can also go to jugendhekt.de. There is a section about the projects on the website as well, where you can look them up. And, uh, so please sit down, uh, close to the microphones, and here's your applause. So, then have we, the, uh, Marco from we have Marco from Easy Bay and Rene from from Gute Laune Fenster. From Gute, Gute Laune Fenster, Happy Mood Window. Ganz außen Lilu und dann. And Lilu? Harpe. Harpe? Und Marble von Anti-Cheat. And Marble from Anti-Cheat. Oh, um Gottes Willen, das ist alles so viel. Event. And Hans Peter. Ähm, fangen wir from doch project. bei meinem Lieblingsthema an Gaming, Anti-Cheat Marble. Was zur Hölle? We said was my favorite uh, project. Jetzt. Ah. Anti-Cheat Marble. Ja. Ja. Anti-cheat is uh, something to try to prevent cheating in gaming. Uh, we started bef because we had a group of people and one of them used to program cheats and I found it very interesting and he said he wanted to use to, to go on the other side of the <laughs> of the force. Yeah. And we thought how can you find out uh, if cheats are being used? What we found is that most cheats in in the game are used about um, are used on through the, the mouse, the computer mouse. So we found before the computer does anything, then we made a mouse sniffer that uh, that just grabs the data before they're processed by the computer, and then they're go going to be verified in the ser on the server. And so we're gonna recognize if some people are using a cheat on their com on their computer or not. I have another question. So somehow you have to um, have the cheater install the program on their computer. It's it's not what something is gonna install on their computer at home. The idea was also talked about. It's something that happens of events, esport events where uh, you really have uh, big prizes to win. And if the organizers say, we want, to, uh, we want to guarantee that there is no cheating, and so you can uh, attach it to the hardware and use it there. Sounds very interesting. Easy Bay. eBay. <laughs> <laughs> there should be something like eBay or, let's say, internet auction platform. What is it about? First, I was by Jugendhackt East in, in, in Dresden, and there I was in the theme uh, future city. How can you uh, can you improve your city in the future? And and we and we talked about uh, garbage, garbage that can be reused, recycling of garbage, and we thought about eBay uh, ads, uh, which is a nice possibility. But then you also have to drive to people, so we thought about this project eBay ads. Uh, we could uh, uh, place it in a in a big hall where people bring things and other people pick up things, like a free shop. And and we implemented this over an, an, a website a, a website where people could just register for their objects and other people could just uh, pick them up. And uh, um, Raspberry Pi. And with QR codes, we implemented the. Um, Lagering and so uh, we use a Raspberry Pi. So, so I, I could just put things in this hall and I never have to see them again? Exactly. Is this, um, is this, concept, is this theoretically or have you tried it? Um, uh, right now it's only theoretical because the resources are not there. Uh, we need still need uh, a storage. So if everyone has a hall in Dresden, please call us. They're searching for one.
Jugendlichen Internet. So, Eleni, you have done something with trees and Wi-Fi, so why? Well, we had the problem that everybody knows that if uh, you're somewhere and you want to check your mails, you're not at home, if you want to do some homework, anything, that kind of things, but uh, you've already used uh, your flat rate, you don't have any data volume. So we thought there are just two little hotspots, free hotspots that you can use in the city. And because nobody wants to give electricity for all the routers for free, we thought maybe we could just uh, mount them on trees and then put a bike next to it. <laughs> And, and then with a dynamo to create electricity just to, to operate the router and to make sure the tree doesn't fall down, which would be quite a problem, then we thought there would be a pump that would, uh, that would water the tree at the same time with a sensor that would, uh, that would measure uh, the state of the tree and if the tree has enough water and if uh, somebody is using the bike fast enough the router would get some electricity. I see it in the news, climate change stopped by young hackers. Have you tried it? We have made a little model but of course we cannot just not take a, a VLAN router and a, a bike and, and make it in real but we have a proof of concept, we made a model. Have, uh, do you want to try it? Yes, but we need we we are missing resource. It's in Berlin. So Berlin, if you have a tree, yes, um, um, a bicycle, and everything else that it's needed here, people who are searching for it. So, René. So, René. You you tried some of the basic problems and want to solve them. I was also in the discussion area of Zukunftsstadt, City of the Future. So we thought about what is important for the City of the Future. We um, decided information is going to be important. So um, it's about public transport and how you get the information. You can get them from the Deutsche Bahn. And we were looking for a platform to make the information uh, nice to look at. So we thought about the Gute Laune Fenster, which should also present this kind of information. And we want to avoid a neg negative um, mood, so you don't get late to work. And we, <laughs> we want to enforce a good mood by cat pictures. Genau. So, where, where should the, the, this sort of window be? Inside the city, at the wall, where, where, where is it? We think it should be at home, for example, in your bathroom. So you have don't have a mirror, but there's a mirror with a display behind it. So you can look through the mirror at the... Um, content behind the mirror. There's a project called Magic Mirror, which is already done by someone else. So the information is going to be presented through this window. So to build it, you need 30 magic mirrors? I'm sorry, Do you can you research? repeat the question? Nein, nur eins. Also eins im Badezimmer oder eins reicht oder zum Beispiel eins im, im Schlafzimmer noch, je nachdem, wo man sowas gerne so hat. So we only need one. Yeah, let's have you depends tried where it? you want to have it. No, we haven't done it. Another team has done it, and okay. we are working on the software for it. One moment for question. We have one last project, and that's that's the event card. So. For big events like Jugend Hacked or this Congress, there are people coming from many regions to one point and place. And at a, at a certain size, the ways people are using are, are doubling. So two people who are, who are coming to the 
Congress might be in the same train sitting right next to each other but don't know about each other. And then you sit next to the other person for hours and are bored and we thought it would be nice to know in advance with whom you are going to the um, Congress together. So we've um, programmed a map where you can enter the route you are taking to the event, so you can look at the um, routes others are taking and contact them um, and build groups to go to events together. So one more question and then you can ask question. Does it exist in real? We have a library. You can download it on GitHub. Or you can look at it at GitHub. So every um, person organizing an event can implement it on their homepage. It's not on one central server, but um, the organizers have to implement it themselves on their own homepage and also um, <laughs> so why we don't have it for this Congress? <laughs> <laughs> this is not our fault. <laughs> so, these are the six, five projects. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> oh, people are going. Does the internet has questions? What happened to anti-cheat? Did it get tested? Um, is it already being used? We tried it on the hackathon. Leute, die eben gerne spielen hatten, dazu gemeint, dass es jetzt keinen wirklichen merkbaren Nachteil gibt in der Maus. People said there was no negative affection of the using from the using of the mouse, but we've never tried it on big events. Zusammengefunden. But we haven't met so far. But the software is there and um, Raspberry Pi und ein Arduino. Everything you need is an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. And um, you just have to put it together. And but after this, we've never tried it, and we stopped the project. Why haven't you tried it? Was there no interest? Or was it more like you meet once at the Jugendhackt event, and afterwards you have other things to do? So we don't have the time, and then uh, and you need to travel to see each other. The interest is there. Um, but we have other priorities. Um, um. <laughs> there are other priorities? <laughs> yeah, so, so, yes. So, so you uh, work together on a project for a weekend, and um, what happens What happens then? What do you take with you? Would you join a Jugendhack well, event again? You work on a project for two days and put a lot of energy into it, but then the project doesn't happen because there is a lack of time after the event. So what do you take out of it? We have an improved concept, and uh, at the next event we can continue with the hacking and with the project. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have, uh, you learn a lot. But about the event map, what is your current status? So we have a few problems. Um, it's it's not easy to for the card to find um, the right city. And we have a few ideas how to do it, um, but there was no time left. So we are still working, actually, um, and we're talking to each other and um, think about how to do it, but this will cost time. How do you organize it? Do you do it online or do you meet up for mini hackathons? Na, doch, eigentlich treffen wir uns schon. Yeah, yeah, well, we're meeting each other. What about TreeFi? Do you still follow up on this project? Well, um, we, n we know we have we know each other before, 
Um, at the moment, we are finished with the model. We just need the resources now. So, um, yeah, if, if we had the res we need the resources. Do you do other things instead, or does it just lie around and you wait to get the material? Yeah, of course we are doing things in our free time, but not to this project. <laughs> what do you do in your free time? Do you chill out or do you work on other projects? So the background of the question is the uh, Jugend Tech event um, that you want to work on other projects in this area or do you don't? So not in this project, but there is another project um, where we are still working on. Which one is it? Scan is easy. Can you please tell us about it? So there is an app which scans in barcode. And, and then this it makes lemonade is full of sugar. And then it m makes uh, a, a, short, uh, a short version of the text. Can you use this app? Is this app live? Can you download it? Yes, there is a website, but we don't have a lot of project, um, products. Is it going to be a community project? So we are still working on the translation. And we have to get all projects into the database. Okay. But it's very easy to enter. I'm into very looking forward to see this. What about EasyBay or as a project? <laughs> do you are you waiting for a storage area or do you work on other projects? Um, mm. I try to rephrase it. Are you still working on Easy Bay? At the moment, not. Do you work on other projects which are um, about hacking or programming? Yes. But this group is from this um, is so split into different parts that um, that we have problems to meet up. So do you fall apart completely? Or do you still know? Are you still in contact with other people? And if you have a question, you contact them. Yes, but online. Oh my God. <laughs> really? You contact them online? Oh my God. What about the gute Laune Fenster? Yes, this is. Uh, well, we are working on a front end for a modern futuristic house. So we're thinking about um, functions to impl imply them, and um, yeah, we're definitely working on it. All right. Last question, uh, last opportunity for questions. Internet? No. So. Stop, stop, what's up? Oh, there's a question up there. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't see the microphones up there, number five. Sorry, I just want to um, tell that there's a living place at the HRV ha Hamburg where where they have some sort of mirrors which can which they where they have um, some sort of mirrors so i can get you the contact where do you sit row 23 Rene, you go to the row 23 of and uh, contacts thank you very much on uh, this participant thanks thank you on the young people from jugendakt okay okay that was Jugend.
Let's start with Jan Roland. You worked on a privacy patch project. You all know about the laptop. Where is my camera sticker? Um, so some people do it for the smartphone. Just to clear us all the so yes, um, we have seen that a lot of people put stickers on the camera on their laptop. So why do people don't do it on their mobile phone? It's a bit more complicated because it's not practical. You use the camera in the front more often. So we are working on a on a thing to put around your mobile phone, which is which is before your camera as well. Um, so we yeah and and there are LEDs inside which are shown on the camera so that um, um, the camera can't see so Nina from auto PGP how to PGP it's one of the biggest problem of people there are some tools to encrypt but people don't use it I mean nobody uses it uh, the people in this room do use it but uh, normal people don't how do you want to explain this so we have a project from Jugendtag South um, at the top um, at the topic to find um, um, to get a crypto messenger and to spread it around we uh, we are not we haven't worked on the crypto because we would destroy it so um, so we try to explain um, um, the the idea behind crypto there are a lot of tutorials inside the internet and um, we have a new concept so we just ask questions like what sort of uh, so what operating system are you using, what sort of things you are using in general, um, so how do you use, um, how do you want to use crypto, like, no, I just want to know that I'm only here for using it, or do you want to have background information, and then we build text blocks and um, get your individual explanation. There is that. Yeah, the website. Yes, the website is online. Oh, what was it? PGP how to or how to PGP? PGP how to or how to PGP? Jugendakt.de slash project, Projekte in German with K. You can find a project online. There's, there are a few parts uh, missing. Um, there are a lot of... Um, it's available in English and German. Um, and if someone want to help us, feel free to join. Uh, so that's what I wanted to ask. You don't want to do this yourself. You are uh, accepting people to help you. Of course. If someone want to help, so just come So feel on. free to help. Now, we have people who want to do encryption, to, to work on encryption themselves. Lucas, for instance. Yes. Um, we have looked at Ricochet, which has a protocol for to anonymize. So that you can use a crypto uh, between two people that they get anonymous and no one will know something about them. And there's a reference um, application which implies GUI and the protocol. So we had a few probla um, problems. Um, one, there's a so our, our first problem was that GUI and the project um, um, was about the front end, so because these parts haven't been um, a part, we couldn't build the front end. And if here are people who have programmed already, uh, you might know this. So we had the idea to build a library. So we started in Haskell 
nebenbei war unser Ziel auch, dass wir es so möglichst modular machen. And next to it, we want to have it modular to, uh, so that we can try new things in the protocol. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, just write an encryption library, just like, just like that. Max tries to measure um, big uh, people uh, amount uh, of events. How do you do this? With magic. No. Um, so we want to rebuild creepy dough, but people told us no. Um, no, this wouldn't work. But so we don't want to spy on people, but we want to locate them. Dann haben wir das halt über WLAN gemacht. So we tried it with Wi-Fi. Um, halt so ein first thing was, it was about the technique behind it. So what was, what is possible? And um, so, so we built up an infrastructure and uh, a back in. And then we tried it technically. Of course, it wasn't finished. It isn't finished. Um, but after two young hack days, um, it's working now. It's running. And now we have um, um, results we can work on. Auch nicht unspannend. That's quite interesting. Now, last project for today is the Neuland Euphonie from Jeremy and Jacob. What do you do there? Um, Neuland Euphonie is quasi praktisch gewordene Überwachung. Neuland Euphonie is um, the most hands on surveillance. Is uh, as proxy, a proxy in Python implemented. The project is implemented in with proxy in Python. So when you go to a website zugänglich darauf zugreifen kann. Das sollen in a way um, that you are not able to access a home page. It is supposed to build an um, awareness um, about for people in the so-called first world to um, have a feeling how censored internet looks like. This is our project. So, dann ist das die Stelle, wo ich, All right, now that's the point where I'm going to ask the audience if anybody has a question. Just stand in front of the microphone or write it uh, from the internet. Internet has a question. A question about the privacy patch. Which uh, power source do you use? Uh, your smartphone for the LED? We have used OTG, so the mobile phone has to support it. And from this part, we get the energy. It's when I think about it, you have uh, something hanging on your ND, like a periphery. Isn't it too thick? Is it practical? This was a prototype which was quite um, big, and we want to build it smaller. Are you working on it currently? Currently, we are not working on it. All right. I'd like to ask the Querschläger project. Uh, does anybody from you know? Uh, does, does anybody from you knew before arriving in about Ricochet? Uh, just a couple. Who knows Haskell? On Haskell programming, the programming language. Not that many people. Uh, Lucas, uh, how did you think about implementing an uh, encryption library yourself? Because if anybody would do this here on the Congress, um, everyone around them uh, would say, oh, I'm programming an encryption library. Everybody would say, don't do this. This is just too dangerous. We have programmed a protocol. Now we have implemented a protocol which uses cryptography, which is already um, there, which already can used. So it can use everything which is 
around um, from projects already there from crypto which is already there so rich ricochet is also not something where you where we would say you can already use it it's already good but it's rather alpha and it has to be proved in practice and it has to be seen whether it is the right but it, it approach. sounds like well, we're not touching the encryption core itself so we can't break anything yeah of course we can break something our protocol can be hacked and hidden services might also encounter problems. Has anybody else have a look at it? S did, did you have somebody just uh, double check your code yeah. apart from yourself? Yeah, in singular cases, but not as in a big style. And our code is not ready yet, so we don't have the complete but is it open source implemented yes our code is so open source. if anybody wants to do some code review in Haskell just feel free um, new, new question hello I have a question on Max I didn't understand the project at all uh, surveillance what are you doing exactly you look at MAC address what do you do exactly in your project no um, mobile files always want Wi-Fi, and the mobile phone always wants to have Wi-Fi because mobile data is very slow. So it is always looking: is there a Wi-Fi network? And we want to catch those Wi-Fi requests, and we get the packages and give them an identifier, a hash value. So these three packages might come from the same source, and then we can say, depending on the um, strength of the signal, where it is coming from. So if here and there and there is something with an antenna, so we can see how many people are in which part of the um, audience room. and. At a uh, conference, you can see where a lot of people are standing, where there might be a queue because people don't get through a door or something. Bingo. Bingo. Lösen wir dann alle Probleme der so we solve oh. all the problems of humanity. Sehr schön. Very nice. Neuland Euphonie project. Do you, do you have about this? Proxy server. Did you did you try it on somebody who didn't know what was happening? No, we haven't tried it yet with people who didn't know what is happening. It's very obvious. Um, the changes are um, highlighted, and there are cat pictures on the website, so you should notice. Everyone is very welcome to try. It's on GitHub. It's it's running. You can use it. Hat, wie man das kann, kann it's very slow. If you have any ideas how to make it faster, we are looking for uh, improvements, ideas for improvement. Thank you very much. One last question about PGP How to Project. Did, did you try on people who had no idea and did they really manage to go through the process? No, we haven't tried it yet. But our project um, came from the idea when I tried to explain it to my mother how to use PGP. And um, my mother did use it and it did work because I did it for her, but she wanted to know how, to, how it is done. And she encountered the project as uh, a problem um, that she could communi communicate with me, but not with anyone else. And then my mom asked me to explain it to her friends, and this was a lot of work for me. So I had the idea to make an easy to understand guide this how to project, um, how to explain it to your mother, or how to explain it okay. to different kinds of people. So please try it, uh, this PGP how to protocol, tr just try to, to use it and, and assess it. So, thank you very much to all the participants from Jugendhabt. This is your applause.
Thanks on all participants. You can go now. Uh, there is somebody else coming. But it's not over, it's not over. I have one more intervention. Jugendhakt is a project from the Open Knowledge Foundation, Germany, and Mediale Fader. And uh, Daniel Fader uh, is, um, is asked to come on stage and tell us a few words. Thank you. The applause also goes to my um, wonderful colleagues, which are standing over there. I can give you a quick look at what is coming up. We have done different events at different places, and we are always thinking about how to develop the program in the future together with the youth, with the people participating and also with the mentors. And we, next year we want to have also four regional events and one main event in Berlin. It's not a lot actually. So there are a lot more people who want to join but can't. And we have also heard in this project presentations how to um, that you it, it's a problem that sometimes you start a project or very often you start a project and how do you develop it how can it become better and we are looking for ideas on how to get more events for young people and how to um, have how you can open, for example, hack spaces for youth as well, and what kind of events you can offer to young people to be more attractive for them. We will have again five events. We want to have more international um, projects, and not only a German language approach, but also work with other partners to have similar youth hacking events with about code and ethics with international partners. We want to have an entry-level program. At the moment, we are um, looking for young people who are already into code, who already have some experience. So young people coming to us um, have some experience at some level. We don't test it, but um, now we want. We are also already thinking about how can how we can approach a more entry level program to also talk approach children how they can learn programming, how very young people can. Um, get a concept about programming with all the ethical questions coming with it. And if you have any ideas and want to help develop those ideas with us, we are very open for you to approach us. And we also want to talk, uh, be attractive to, for girls. Currently we have 20% of girls attending, which is not bad for this kind of events, but it's not nearly um, representing the society, so we want to have 50% of girls attending our events. Mm. And next year we want to talk to more um, actors which are involved in the area of girls in tech and implement their experience. And we have already implemented this scientific um, ideas which are around but we are still we still want to focus on this I have to finish now thank you very much uh, for the program for this great space and it's great to be on this main stage and be in contact with so many people and I have to talk to Dino who has a um, conference area where we can implement TreeFi maybe. So it's great to get in contact with all of these people and with you. And 
at two o'clock tomorrow, there will be a meetup at the Jugendtech Thank you very assembly. much. Now, very shortly, there is there is uh, real f things you can do if a, a teenager uh, has a project. There needs. They need people to organize it with them. And this Congress is full of hackers. And these teenagers from Jugendhakt really need people to give them a hand, especially in Berlin. But uh, if you know people or elsewhere, if you know people, if you know people who can program, who can give assistance, please just give them a hand and support them as far as you can. Thank you very much.